Good morning. Welcome to Woodlawn Without Walls Worship. I'm Pastor Lori. Later in the service, we'll be joined by Pastor Lance, bringing us our sermon today as we continue on in our sermon series, Full. Today, we're talking about the word careful. Here at Woodlawn, we're committed to maintaining our online service for some reasons that we're, we hold very dear to us. We want to make sure those who are unable to attend in person, for whatever reason, are able to still connect in worship and have that time of connecting with God each week. We also offer this service as an invitation for those who might be interested in learning a little bit more about who we are here at Woodlawn as a community of faith and grace. One thing that is certainly in the DNA here at Woodlawn is our focus on missions and connecting and supporting this Derby community. Each Sunday, in fact, we have a particular moment for mission that we designate our giving towards. If you're interested in how you can contribute to this week's moment for mission or finding out more about what this week's moment for mission is, you can find that information on the website, woodlawnumc.net. As we come, come together in this time of worship, let's prepare our hearts with our call to worship. I invite you to read the words with me together. With eyes to see and ears to hear, with lips to sing and hands to help, let us worship God with the fullness of our being. It's a time in our service where we come together in prayer. If you have a prayer request, a joy or, or a concern that you'd like to share, if you're watching on Facebook, you can share that now in the comments and trust that we will be praying for you. Or you can always call the church office to share your prayer request to make the pastors aware and let us know that you'd like to be added to our prayer chain. Let's be in an attitude of prayer together. 
Gracious and holy God, you are the Lord of new beginnings. In the wisdom of Christ, you make all things new. Make us agents of your transforming power and storytellers of your justice and your peace so that all may share in the healing that you bring. Christ, whose birth dissolves the barrier between divine and human, whose life broke down the dividing walls between friend and enemy, and whose death and resurrection abolished the stumbling block between life and everlasting life. We give thanks for your great love for us and remember nothing can separate us from your love. Keep us in your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness. We may minister your justice with compassion. We may offer ourselves in service as we share your goodness and your mercy. God, when the world seems broken beyond repair, send us forth to mend and love. Let us be beacons of hope that your light might shine through us as we strive to be your heart, your hands, and your feet in this world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and in, in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This Sunday, we continue to work through the list of our full words. Careful now. <laughs> How many times have I said those words to my daughters when they were growing up? Careful now. Be careful. It's an interesting word in our full series because careful doesn't necessarily connote being full of concern or um, attention for one's needs. Um, for instance, we don't usually say, be careful of the sick or be careful of the needy. No, there's a, there's a secondary definition for the word care when we use it in, in that way, be careful. Oxford Dictionary offers this definition. Care, as in serious attention or consideration, doing something correctly to avoid damage or risk. Hear it? Oh, be careful. The British use the word mindful to get across the same idea. Be attentive. Do it right. Avoid risk or harm. If we aren't careful, then we might become careless, that is, without care or consideration or attention to detail or accuracy, doing something any old way or not even doing something at all. That's neglectful, not careful. Hmm? Our scripture today is the parable of the talents. You might remember it from the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to read from Matthew 25. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. 
And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. All the servants thought that they were being careful. Two were careful to use the money just as their master would have in order to produce a return. The owner returns looking for an impact, bang for the buck, so to speak. The other servant, well, he thought he was being careful, burying the talent in the ground in a safe place so as not to lose any of it, not to risk it in any way. But, well, the master isn't impressed. The story goes on. The master takes away the one talent that the, that the servant has managed to save and gives it to the one who already has five plus five. <laughs> he sees the third as thoughtless, careless, neglectful. He knew, didn't he, that the master expected a return and yet, the servant's actions didn't bear out that he had given much thought to all that he might do, all that he could have done with the talent that he had been provided. He wasn't careful after all. Not as in full of concern, looking after a person's need, but careful as in taking care, being attentive, considerate, to act correctly, to avoid harm. This week, I want to talk about those words in the specific context of our church and the funds that it requires to maintain its ministry in our community. Now, right off, let me say, this message primarily is preaching to the choir, those who are already a part of our congregation. If you are watching this message as our guest, perhaps someone who is looking for a church home, um, just know that each year, once a year in the fall, our church conducts a special campaign to celebrate our congregation's giving and to ask for a commitment to give in the coming year. Now, this special Sunday is coming up next week, so today's message is sort of laying the groundwork and pointing toward that, not unlike a a pledge drive for public broadcasting, right? So forgive me for spending a little bit of time preaching to the choir. For those of us in this congregation, when we give, not only do we support directly those ministries that are funded through our budget, but we make the very existence of our church possible in this community. And thus, anything that this church is responsible for, or anything that anyone does because they are trained and sent, called into mission and ministry from this place, is made possible because of your gift. Next week, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate all the ways this amazing congregation impacts our community and reaches out beyond our community, even to the edges of the earth. We'll invite each person that is related to our congregation to make a giving plan next week to continue doing all the good that we can in every way that we can as a church in the coming year. Now, so that next Sunday can be all about the celebration and the ministry and the mission, I want to take a moment this week to talk about some nuts and bolts about why a fall stewardship campaign is so necessary to our congregation, to encourage some careful consideration about being a part of our efforts. So why does Woodlawn, why does a congregation like ours have an annual giving campaign in the first place? Well, there are two reasons. Like most member-supported organizations, we need to simply secure revenue 
for the coming year. And we need to have some idea what that revenue will be so that we can plan accordingly. Think about public broadcasting drives, the pitches that you have heard that your pledge will determine the programming that will be available in the coming year. Well, the church isn't any different. Our finance committee needs to know what the revenue will be in the coming year so as to plan for appropriate spending in the coming year to create a budget. And we can't do anything about the fixed costs in our budget, things like utility bills and insurance and the costs of, of maintenance and supplies, for example. The only variable expenditures that we have to work with each year are our program, our ministry, things like uh, curriculum and events, children and youth ministry, worship, Stephen ministry, congregational care, and of course, the staffing that is required to carry those programs out. So, knowing what our members are going to voluntarily commit to giving in the coming year helps our church determine at what levels we will be able to continue our program and our ministry and the positions that carry out that program and ministry. If you've been following our financial reports that are published in our newsletter each week. You know that Woodlawn has been running a deficit this entire year. That's when it comes to meeting our obligations and our bills. To date, that deficit is around $70,000. And by year's end, we expect this deficit to be somewhere between 70 and perhaps as much as $90,000. Woodlawn's Finance Committee and Staff Parish Relations Committee have already begun to make plans for a smaller budget for next year. They've been making cuts. Some of those cuts come very close to the bone to narrow the gap between our spending and our revenue. We just don't know how much smaller that we will have to make our budget until the church knows what its revenue might look like in the coming year. And the only way to make an educated guess about that is to ask each one of us to make an estimate of what our giving will be in the coming year. You see, Woodlawn is careful in that way, making making a careful, mindful analysis so that we can be good stewards and not put our church at risk. Now, all of that is one reason for doing a false stewardship campaign, but there is a second reason, and I think it's the more important reason, and that is to celebrate to celebrate the things that God is doing in and through this wonderful congregation, to show the impact that this church has on the lives, not only those who are a part of Woodlawn, but especially the impact on the lives of those who live in our community. We do this as a way of saying that your giving through this church makes a difference. Without your gift, there are stories that cannot be told. Without your giving, there would be no Woodlawn. And without Woodlawn, well, Derby and the Great Plains Conference, even our world would be negatively affected. I don't ask you to give to your church as a matter of obligation. I ask you to give because your gift makes a difference and because God has been so generous with us. There's no other organization quite like Woodlawn in this community. Doing what it does because people from Woodlawn seek to serve as the heart and the hands and the feet of Jesus for our neighbors. Our celebration next week will tell a story of a church that demonstrates the love of God and the concern for our community like no other. The story of a church that deploys scores and scores of 
people each week in service and mission right here in our own backyard. A church that's making a huge impact in our community as well as beyond our community to the very corners of our annual conference, even the world. Now, we're going to tell that story next week. It's an amazing story, and I hope you'll be here for it. Until then, I want you to begin now, though, to prepare for the launch of our Giving Drive next week. I'm asking each and every one of us to participate in this giving campaign and to do so with great care, with mindfulness, thoughtfulness. Why? Well, because if, if we do it in a quick and thoughtless manner, or if we neglect to participate altogether, Woodlawn and its ministry in our community will be diminished. The impact of our ministry on this community will be at risk. So be careful. You see, there's a tendency for those of us who have been around lots of stewardship campaigns, who have been around lots of giving drives, to just fill out our card without a lot of thought. Fill it out quickly. We know how much that we give to the church. Maybe it's a flat amount. Uh, maybe it's a couple hundred dollars a month. Maybe it's even more than that. Maybe it's $25 a week. We've heard quite a little bit in the news about inflation because the costs of goods and services are going up more rapidly this year than in previous years. But the truth is, costs go up for our church every year. And yet, Woodlawn has a good number of folks who simply fill out their card and give the same amount year after year after year. If we're careful, we'd ask ourselves some questions. We'd ask ourselves, what do we base that decision upon? Is it just an amount that we think sounds about right? A, a reasonable number, something that we feel is about right in the amount that we give as a church gift? Or, or do we think about things like giving as a percentage of our income? thinking each year whether or not our income has gone up or gone down, whether or not we've had some unexpected windfall that has come our way. Do we think about how our giving reflects our own devotion to Christ, our understanding of God's goodness, how God provides everything that we and our family needs? How careful are we in making our giving decisions? The Bible talks about giving proportionately as one has received. In this way, if one has received much, then one is asked to give much. And if one has received little, well then proportionately little is required. Proportionate giving, that is giving a percentage of what one has received also moves us to a, to a place of gratitude, not giving out of obligation or guilt, but out of thanksgiving for everything that God has already supplied. That's why the Bible suggests a tithe, one-tenth, 10% of one's income. Now, there are some in our congregation who give the tithe, some who exceed it. You might already be there. The real question is, do you even know for sure? Hmm? Have you calculated carefully the amount of your income so that you know what percentage of your income that you're presently giving to the church? That's, that's really my challenge for all of us today, for each one of us to be fearless in our own examination, to ask ourselves those questions so that we know for ourselves exactly how much we receive and what percentage of that that we then in turn give. 
For example, if I were to ask you, how much do you give to the church? You might be able to tell me the exact dollar amount. But could you tell me the percentage? What portion of your income that you return to God for God's purposes and use? So, I challenge us all today to carefully consider what it is we want that percentage to be. How it might reflect our faith, our love of God, our gratitude to God in our giving. Is the tithe your goal? 10%? Or say it's closer to 5% or even 3%. You get to choose. You make the determination. I just ask that you do so mindfully, carefully, with attention and consideration. You see, the real genius of the Bible in setting out giving as a percentage or a portion of one's income is that it's not only just, it's not only fair for the wealthy and for the poor, it also means that as one's income increases over time, one's giving also automatically increases, which means the revenue for the church keeps up with inflation automatically. Only God would have already thought of that. <laughs> we wouldn't have stewardship campaigns if we all gave proportionately. The church could then bank on the premise that there would always be enough and that contributions will always keep up with costs. A small increase in income automatically results in a small increase in revenue for the church. Now, earlier you heard me say Woodlawn has some challenges. We have a deficit in giving against revenue of some $70,000, and we expect that amount to grow by year's end. So what, what difference really would a small increase really make when our challenges seem so great? Well, say, say you gave your two cents worth. Two cents more of every dollar that you made. I mean, everybody always wants to chip in their own two cents worth, right? <laughs> what difference really would two cents make? Well, I've done some careful calculations for us to consider. The census tells us that the median household for Derby is $74,447. Now, mean is an average. The average income is actually closer to 88000 but that's inflated because there are a few really big super earners in our community, and that skews it. The median is the middle. That means half of all the households in Derby make uh, less than that, $74,447, but half of all the households in our community make more than that. Now, as a church, I'd say Woodlawn's pretty average, middle of the pack, wouldn't you say? We don't have too many big super earners here, I don't think. And we don't have too many living below the poverty line. Most of us are nearer the middle. W wouldn't you agree? Now, Woodlawn has 268 households with a giving record this year. Now, that's a lot. We're thankful. We're thankful for each and every one of you that give generously to your church. But you might be surprised to learn that there's another 311 households in our congregation for which we have no record of giving this year. Now, a few of those households might not have the means to make a gift, but surely not all. A number of these households haven't attended in the past year, though not all of these households are inactive. Perhaps simply some believe that surely there are others, others who support the church, its ministries, and its operations, and their gift simply isn't necessary. Well, we have 268, 268 giving households. That's something to celebrate. 
And together, those 268 households will give about $650,000 by the end of the year. Now, as I said, we're on track to spend some seven to $90,000 more than that, but let's, let's celebrate and focus on the $650,000. That's pretty good. That's an average of about $2,400 in giving per household. The median income for our community, with that information, we can determine the percentage of income that is being given on average in our church. Well, it comes out to right about 3.2% of the median income. Are, are, are you following me? You see, an average gift of $2,400 annually from an income of $74,447 is about 3.2%. Now, what if, what if those same giving households would give just two cents more on every dollar that they receive, right? Two cents per dollar per giving household. That would result in a total of $1,037,500. I would not only erase our deficit, but provide additional funding for some $300,000 in new ministry. Now, if you have trouble swallowing that, come to me sometime. I'd be happy to show you the simple math. How much impact could we have in our community with an additional $300,000 in funds for ministry? Can you imagine? Could you dream with me? Some might be thinking, well, preacher, you talk about two cents. Now, I make sixty or $70,000 a year, so that two cents is going to add up to a lot. Okay, okay. I... I get it, two cents per dollar of income might be asking for more than you think you could handle. How about a penny? How about just one cent? If each giving household gave just one cent more per dollar that they earn, for example, if you give 3.2%, the average in our congregation, you'd begin to give 4.2%. If you tithe, you'd begin to give 11%. If you give nothing, then just start with the penny, 1%. Would that 1% make a difference? Well, even a penny more, 1% more of one's income would produce almost $838,000. $838,000 would wipe out the deficit and still provide about a hundred grand in new funds for new ministry. Do you want a, a pastor of congregational care again? Well, there's the funds to provide it. It just takes a penny more per dollar earned. Let's say one third of our households that currently don't give at all would promise to give just one penny for every dollar that they receive. To start there, a tenth of a tenth, a tenth of a tithe, one percent. Did you know that's an additional $74,500? <laughs> See, that's the beauty of proportional giving and why it's so important. But it takes a certain amount of attention and detail to make this happen. Some careful planning and some careful implementation. And to not do so, well, that would be careless, maybe even neglectful. As we neglect the church's ministry, its ability to have a, a positive impact and effect on our community. Should we need to cut staff when we cut back on funding program and ministry? We cut back on our ministry's reach, and that matters. Before we launch our giving campaign next week, I'm asking you to do some thinking and some praying, to be careful and mindful, not neglectful, as we complete this important task together. 
I'd like you to do a few specific things. Come prepared next week, having already thought a little bit about your income and the percentage of your income that you presently give and the percentage of your income that you would like to give. Secondly, come next week and pick up your packet before church begins. In it, you'll find everything that you need to carefully consider the commitment of your gift for the coming year. And come ready to celebrate next week. There's so much to applaud when we consider the impact of our church's ministry in this community. And finally, uh, don't be neglectful forgetting to fill out your estimate of giving and returning it to the church before the deadline. This is an important step that our church leadership depends upon to know how we might plan for our spending in the coming year. Will you prayerfully, carefully consider the difference that a penny might make? See if that penny would, would restrict your lifestyle or would be a hardship for you and your family in any way. Because a penny, a penny will set us on the road to success. A penny will put a smile on our face. And most importantly, a penny will ensure that Woodlawn is around for a good long time, making a great impact on our community and the world around us. With some careful preparation, We'll all be ready next week for the celebration as we talk about another full word next week, and that is bountiful. Bountiful. Until then, receive this blessing. God's provision is generous, a blessing that comes each day. May we be careful with what God entrusts to us for the impact that we might have on the world around us with that which God has supplied. Thanks be to God.